Welcome to the top video game podcast from HorribleNight.com for Tuesday, April 29th, 2014. I'm your host, Justin Lacey, coming at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Nights. Joined this evening by Aaron McNeil. Welcome back to the show. It's been so long, but I'm back and my fans are rejoicing. I can hear them now. Uh, do you, yeah, do you still have... I've got headphones on, though, so... <laughs> your Animal Crossing town does not count as your fans? Oh, well, How'd that then, go, by the way? You said you jumped back into that game. Did everybody hate I played you? It, I played it one night. People were like, whoa, where have you been? You've been on an island somewhere? You got lost? And I'm like, no, I've I've just been in my house, apparently, for, for months. <laughs> just <laughs> My house is such a mess in that game. I, I There's probably, what, is it not roaches everywhere? Uh, apparently, I passed a. I have that law where everything's beautiful or something. So <laughs> I, I think they kept the roaches out of my house, but my house was covered in like Fourth of July fireworks. Should have gotten you expelled, but um, let's not jump the gun though. What bes- Mayor before, for life. we got plenty of time to talk video games. What else has been going on? I've twice now gone to a local trivia night right by my job in uh, downtown Urbana, mm-hmm. where. It's a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I guess I, I know I like to play trivia every now and then. You know, I'll watch Jeopardy. I'll wager all my money. I'll win. If I'm that good. <laughs> right. But when, you, yeah, but when you have to go against people in like the public real setting, I have not won a trivia night yet with some of my coworkers. But they'll do like general trivia, current events. Last time I went, which was like two weeks ago, they had a – they had like board games. It was like games and toys. And I'm like, I've got this under control. You know, I love games and toys. That oh, it was brutal. Apparently not as much as you thought. Yeah, I I don't know shit. I mean, is there like, uh, do, do your other co-workers, do your other, I don't know, the other the other noobs in the crowd, do they fare any better or worse than you? Do you feel like you're, you're on track? Because I feel like there are these... Yeah. These trivia people that just dominate. Like this is this is what they do. This, they are professional amateur trivia players. <laughs> professional amateur yes. trivia players. I found the the group that seems to be dominating, and it's like o- the older crowd. Like huh. they they remember a lot of stuff. Like they'll know music from the early '90s, like to a T. <laughs> they'll know like, stuff about golf, like who won the golf tournaments. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know this stuff. I don't care. You, Tiger you Woods. Ask- if someone else was like Tiger Woods, maybe that's the answer. I'm like, I know that's not the answer, but I can't tell you what it is. Huh. But uh, yeah, the older crowd dominates. But I just feel good when I get the question right. What's what's the, what's the trivia format? Like, it's not the, is it the electronic board or is it some some dude with it's, his his <laughs> DJ it's pen and paper? Okay. Pen and paper by candlelight. No, it's just we write on a sheet. And um, we'll go through 10 questions per category, and then we turn in the sheet. And so there's a lot of whispering, hush, hush. It's like, oh, yeah, making... you don't want, you got to yeah. keep your, you got to keep your conversation quiet as well. Well, it's it... hard to do. I get excited. So when I know the answer to something, I just want to blurt it out. I just want to be like, you know, Alan Thick. <laughs> Every answer. I only got Every one. Every answer, of... Alan Thick. I got, I only got one of them right. And it wasn't the that one I thought. To be the direction of trivia, just what's old stuff. <laughs> Um, I the I, the last time I was I was at a bar and they were doing trivia. I wasn't participating, but um, they managed to spoil some movie for me with one of their questions. Um, and like a lot <laughs> of the funny. non-trivia crowd was kind of pissed off about it. It was I forget what it was. Oh. It was a the the movie was in the la- like in the last couple years, and uh, it's really it was really ad- aggravating. But yeah, they need to. It broadened their spoiler reach, apparently. <laughs> yeah, Give it like 10, 15 years, the movie's 15 years Oh, I think we old. need, as a society, we need to come together on some spoiler to rules. Decide. Because yeah. uh, I've spoken about it before, but the internet has been truly awful with this current run of television shows, the last television shows and movies in the oh, last two months. terrible. Well, I mean, you have Game of Thrones going. Everyone wants yep. to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just... I feel like with Game of Thrones, there has to be this crowd that understands also they're going to watch it the next night. Like, people that have HBO, yeah. it's, a, it's a it's a different crowd than, um, you know, it's not like a network TV show. And I feel like That's there should be some true. leeway uh, with those of us that have to catch it the next night, uh, however we have to catch it. And, um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't... You, 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 they're not even giving me five minutes of leeway on facebook i'm at the point 
where I log into Facebook and I and I just see someone like they don't tell me anything. They just kind of exclaim Game of Thrones, and I get pissed. <laughs> they just say Game of Thrones with all the the because, post says, uh, and you're angry. Or or oh no, this show tag hashtag Game of Thrones. It's just like oh okay, well something happens this episode. Something this is, ha- does so- does something not happen in a Game of Thrones I mean, episode? I feel some- like. You can't have something happen every episode. Like it's gotta, there's gotta be some story building episodes. And so if I see that, even see that level of, it's not really a spoiler. I know I'm ridiculous, but still, it's just like it changes my perception okay. going in that episode, being like, okay, something's gonna happen. I don't trust anything on screen. Something's gonna happen. And uh, most so of the time, there are, there are filler episodes of Game of Thrones sure. where like. Yeah. The Monday after people come in and they just kinda like nod at each other like, Yeah, we watched it, but there's no reason to yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. It was the bottle episode where you know, Jon Snow got trapped in a phone booth. <laughs> the whole yeah, no, yeah, the whole the whole show is him talking someone down <laughs> off of a ledge. Yeah, don't hour. jump. Yeah. The dragons are coming, don't jump. <laughs> Spoilers. 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 Um I don't think I will have time to run to any trivia nights because we are strongly debating getting a second dog, and the only reason I'm bringing this up is because you uh, are an owner of two dogs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? So, Bowser is about six months old. I know okay. we want a second dog at some point. I'm trying yeah. to, We have access to another litter, litter of corgis. We actually could get one of his sisters, his half-sister. Okay. Uh, so they'd be six months apart, but... I was going to ask you, like, how did you get your two dogs? Was there a separation? Did you get them at the same time? They were the same time, sisters okay. from the same litter. And that was probably, if I'm going to have two dogs, that's the only way I want to have two Rip dogs. Rip that Band-Aid off. Yeah, I want to adhere that to, like, the hairiest part of a body. You know, like, <laughs> I don't, Let's not get too caught up on that part of the body, I guess. But I want to just put the Band-Aid there and rip it. Yeah. Yeah. And have them reach adult age and be like, they're trained, they're good, they don't chew up stuff. Yeah. So I'm just like, I could have basically a year of full nonstop of puppy at this point because I feel like at about the four or five month range, they, uh, uh, you know, they're potty trained and they, you can trust them with some stuff. They're still hyper as all hell, but yeah, they're super like, hyper. some of the puppy surprises are gone and I would just be starting that cycle over. So. Um, but I don't know. Like, I, I don't want him to get too old either. Like, I don't, uh, that's the other fear is like, if I don't that's get him tr- now, yeah. what is the cutoff for, uh, how old he should be? So, yeah, um, you've put yourself in a position having one dog wanting another one. You kind of, it's like, you kind of don't want that gap to get too far apart where now you're having to focus on the puppy and then yep. the other dog's like, who's this, you know, person encroaching on my space. So the problem is beast. though. Everybody that doesn't have a dog thinks it's adorable. Everybody that I talk to that has a dog, it's even the ones with multiple dogs, they have your your initial reaction of, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, I had the two dogs at the same time, like I said, and there was a point when they were a puppy within that first year where I did wind up like fetal on the ground, like staring up at the <laughs> ceiling going, what have I done to myself? Why am I, why is this my life? I go to work, I come home. I'm, you know, scrubbing poop off of a carpet with a toothbrush. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe I was spoiled too. Bowser was pretty good about that. He uh he peed everywhere. But uh, oh, yeah, the, you you learn to love pee. <laughs> <laughs> when it's not the other thing, pee. Is Celebrate. Great. Celebrate the pee. Like let me put my old shoes on, throw some paper towels, towels down and just dance on this pee spot cuz at least it's not poop. Right. Speaking of dancing, in bodily waste, uh, Nintendo released NES Remix 2, and it's your game of the week. <laughs> I mean, that was that was a segue if I've ever heard one. Something like that. No, tell me about tell me about it because I have so, I have I have icky feelings about it. And uh, oh, you have so icky feelings. Tell me that I should try these out and that it's okay. So I skipped NES Remix One. A friend bought it, and he's like, "Oh, it's pretty good." You know, you try out these other games, do quick little challenges. And I debated. I sat for like an hour on Friday when this came out, just staring at the price, going, do I want to buy it? Should I buy the first one first? I mean, this one apparently is the one that has like Super Mario Brothers 3, mm-hmm. Punch-Out. It's the one that has like the, the AAA, you know, your childhood nostalgia glasses, favorite games of, the, of all time. 
Mm-hmm. And so I finally broke down. I'm like, I should just play it. I'm going to buy one or the other. Might as well get the one with the cool stuff. And I played it for a few hours. Whoa. And <laughs> hours. I found, okay. Yeah, a few hours. And I found it rather... I found it rather addictive for me, and maybe it's because I don't know if you've played the first one, or if, if that's no. where your icky feelings are coming from. Okay, so I know that I know the first one had like less well-known games, and it didn't yeah, get a great reception. I guess it, it was like an all right reception. Yeah. It's, like, it's a thing you can do, but this one it does. While it does make me want to play the games in their original form, it's kind of interesting just to see like a Kirby adventure Kirby going through Super Mario I mean, levels. I, I will admit I am intrigued by Super Luigi Brothers. And even, I haven't even tried that, but <laughs> just the run yeah, playing, run left. <laughs> beer mode Mario Brothers sounds yeah. terrifying. Beer mode? Or oh, mirror. mirror. Mode. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like what's I was like beer mode? That's that's much more all, targeting all my it. games are beer mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know. I liked it. Cool. I liked it well enough for fifteen dollars. I maybe would have preferred it for ten, but yeah, I liked it. Like, I think what happened was they released these, and I'm just I am at my breaking point with their virtual console releases, and that I'm still enjoying uh, them, especially because they started breaking into their Game Boy Advance library, and there's some there's some good shit in there. There's, yeah. Advance Wars. But I don't trust them to not have me have to buy it again for whatever's next. And there's that side of it. And just, like, yeah. the trickling of releases. Like, they they need... It just... When I, they, when I see these remix games, and they don't... They're not, like, knocking it out of the park. Like, they... I would rather play... Uh, no. I would rather play a WarioWare and... I think I was also kind of annoyed when they said, well, we can't put these on the 3DS because it requires the Wii U's power. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? These are, <laughs> what? These are 8-bit games. Um, calm the hell down. Um, That's strange. It's just... I'm starting to just get annoyed with Nintendo for not bringing all this stuff along faster. Like, give me the, give me the subscription to your full library. <laughs> I will pay you whatever yeah. dollars... And and then do these remix stuff to get people into it, but like, I don't know. It's uh, I, and I haven't point. looked. I haven't looked at it. I think all the games they're remixing at this point are available on Virtual Console. There is literally on the eShop front page, literally for Gifford there, uh-huh. but it is there. There's a button you can press, and it's like you know, check out the games that are in. Okay, NES so they are. They're too. using as a, and that's the other side of it. They're using as a straight up ad for those games, and it was just yes. Like, it's a fifteen dollar ad I bought for games that I'm probably emulating in some form already. <laughs> yeah, and and I know I'm being like uh, probably too critical. This is just a fun thing, and and honestly, it shows a side of Nintendo's personality that they need to bring out more. They're having fun with it, but like, there's just something not quite as whimsical as it should be about this, and it's a little too tactical of a remix, and it, it just. It's uh, reminding me of I want Nintendo to loosen up and have some have some more fun and and also free free their games. I want to play your games, yeah. Reggie. Free the games. <laughs> free the game. <laughs> Nintendo has just been it's been the the awkward kid at the dance when it comes to digital. I suppose like Microsoft and Sony, they seem like they have their shit pretty well locked down in terms of here are the games we're offering. You can play them without going to the store, but Nintendo. There, it took them so long to even, you know, connect the 3DS and Wii U eShops into having like one account for both of them, and then there's still the matter of you buy NES Remix on Wii U, but you can't play it on 3DS. That their explanation for that seems like that was bullshit, but yeah, yeah, it, it seems too not. It's not as interconnected as it should be at this point, and Nintendo acts like they they flirt with these ideas of. Let's do all the things that other companies have been doing for a while now, and let's try to be a little quirky about it. But at this point, no one's really excited which about is, this kind of thing. Which is also weird because I felt like they, if they didn't like create this genre of micro games, of weird micro games with a WarioWare, like then they certainly perfected it, and they so they have the yeah. like, they could find a better way to present all this stuff, and it's just like I don't. 
I don't know. It's 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 not coming from from the right place from Nintendo. And I, granted, we we hold them to a very high bar with this type of stuff. But I just that's very I, true. They've this is the second one. I've, I've just I've looked at this thing at the eShop, and I've just kind of glared at it, and I just I, <laughs> and I haven't bought it yet. So how uh, how would you feel about SNES Remix? Man, that's the other thing, you know. That's all. Fuck. I want them all combined. I want like Nintendo Remix. You, I don't want you, like. Yeah, okay. I don't want to go through. Like, we're just now getting GBA games on Virtual Console. I don't want to go through the twelve-step program again with them. I was just like, give me, <laughs> like, Nintendo flood me heroine. with all of your all your goodness. <laughs> I'm asking you. Like, I will give you what that money is. Like, it's. 50 bucks a month for the first month. Like, I, I'm i fine. Like, I don't need to buy a Nintendo game. Like, that's ridiculous. But that's that's me. I would, I'm telling you, I, I there's got to be a better way to uh, get me into this. And um, I'm sure I'm not the so only one. So N- Nintendo's kind of like the free-to-play model, and you would prefer Gosh. a subscription. <laughs> what are they? They are, what was before free-to-play? Like, they're just Buy, all, <laughs> yeah, buy they're, everything. They're still in the awkward, overpriced mobile game phase like they haven't figured that out yet so i don't know um but yeah. it, at least they're having fun with their stuff i just want to i just want them to um raise the gates a little bit faster so um also uh we weren't we haven't we weren't able to post your radio waves and i didn't get to read them yet so i know for a fact Secrets. that you will not stop playing diablo 3 will not cannot why not what are you doing? Why not? I I set these goals for myself in that game. It's so easy just to boot it up and jump right into like a rift or do bounties. Reaper of Souls has made Diablo 3 an addictive thing to do when I don't know what else I should be doing. Yeah, yeah. And I have all these little goals like I want to deck out my wizard with new gear and I got my monk to level seventy, and I've got like <laughs> all the classes are twenty and up, basically. Nice. That was it's my just a matter. Of... I had that goal before Reaper Souls came out. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> you had goal. I got ew, I that achieved, didn't go well. I achieved your goal. Uh, it's just so I'm... it's so random, and it it pours out the gear. It gives me the stuff I want. Every time I play, I get at least one legendary or set piece, or I'm able to make one. So there's always just that carrot on a stick. I, so you're trying I to never co- get the carrot. Are you trying to collect sets? Is that I told my friend, yeah, my, my goal, <laughs> the day I get a full set is the day I might consider stopping Diablo. And he's like, you will never get a full set. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. And um, I'm like, I will play forever. So are you playing with friends? Are you, or are you solo? I have more? been, yeah, which is just so awkward compared to, uh, not really awkward that I'm playing with friends now, but I didn't see myself really yeah. getting into that kind of thing that I play through the main game you know, act one to act four by myself. Yep. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of all right. I see how it might be more fun if you got other people there and you can talk to them. But I was able to enjoy myself playing solo, even in the broken state with the auction house and all that stuff. But now that I'm playing with friends, I'm kind of spoiled. And I'm, I'm glad I have people to play with in that I could just be on there running through a rift and I might hit like a brick wall if the enemies are too hard. I'm playing on like torment difficulties now. At what level and, torment? Uh, I got to... Two. I'm okay. on two. <laughs> so, <laughs> every now and then, like my friend will log on. I'm like, oh, will he jump into my game? Will he jump into Diablo? And then he'll, he'll hop on we'll play a little bit together. It's been great. However, he started playing Hearthstone yeah. this weekend. And so I saw him log on. I'm like, oh, maybe we'll play some Diablo. Oh, and then he oh. launched that card game. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that you'll I'll, I'll take that bait because that was kind of, that's kind of my side game. That's not the big one I want to talk about. But if it wasn't for Hearthstone, I would be all over Diablo three to the same level you are. But Hearthstone is my I've, lost I've got my friends. I've got some time to kill. <laughs> I need to play Hearthstone. Um, plus, plus the iPad version is yeah takes up my couch. Well, time I don't too. blame you. Yeah, you can play it on iPad. That's pretty sweet. Um, because I yeah, I mean, I'm kind of I'm kind of jealous. Like I was gonna ask you, uh, um, you know, how what level Paragon are you? Like, and how are you enjoying the Paragon system? That's something. The last time we talked about Diablo, we hadn't really gotten into. The Paragon system is pretty great just because, I don't know, I'm a sucker for a number being tied to my character and that <laughs> number increasing over time. <laughs> yeah. And the Paragon system essentially means that I will never stop having it pop up on screen that I've leveled up 
give you that flash of light. That's pretty. That's, I, think that's, I mean, that's, that's what Diablo necessary. is about. That is like yeah, that's it's, necessary. It's gear and leveling up, like, and that they found an arbitrary way to continue that. I forget. Does Paragon have a calf? I, I not that I I don't even want to look it up. Okay. I hope it doesn't. But I've seen people that are Paragon level two hundred, and I got to like sixty, sixty one or something. So I know I still have like a hundred and forty levels at to least, go. At least at at the least, yeah. if it, there is a cap. But yeah, uh, I've been sticking with Hearthstone. Uh, this recent week's accomplishment is I finally got all of the basic cards for all of the classes. So. What happens is you start off with like your 10 class cards and there are 20 available and you have to level each character up to 10. You level up faster if you play online against people. Um, People. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, so, yeah, I finally got my, those basic cards out of the way and now I'm going to start focusing on trying to run up the ladder, which I think they're resetting. I think basically there's a message when you log in that the April season is ending. So, um, I saw something about that. Yeah, so I will. Uh, I'll definitely jump into that. And I've played a couple local games. We've got four guys in the office. We all play, and uh, trying to get them more and more interested in the game because uh, they announced last week they're like trying to encourage people to go and play this game in person. I think it's more to. Prob- I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, I mean it's with the, it's yeah. I think they must be promoting the iPad version in that way. But uh, okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, and if you get a certain number of people in an area, they call, a, they give it like some sort of session name, and you can get if you're all if like I think it's if three or four people are connected to the same network playing Hearthstone, you all get like a bonus card of some sort. That, oh, yeah. So they're they're experimenting with that stuff. But um, beyond all that, at PAX East a couple weeks ago, they announced the first. Um, single player expansion for this, so they're going to do some story mode stuff for Hearthstone. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, be curious Dude. to see where they build up because this thing has, uh, you know, we we were kind of on the fence uh, of whether or not to nominate this for Game of the Year awards, and we decided to open that up to because we had opened up uh, awards for like best beta of the year um, and considering yeah. beta games that like you know are infinitely in beta. We uh, we thought Hearthstone fit in that, so we ended up giving it uh, an award last year. But I feel like it's, you know, it had its fans, and then it like hit a certain level of quality where, uh, you know, a certain level of serious gamers and journalists uh, started playing it and taking it, like, uh, and and recognizing that it's a pretty good game. But I think it's it's starting to like kind of blow up right now like people that i oh, wouldn't yeah. norm- normally associate with playing even a blizzard game have kind of gotten into this and uh it's been f- it's been fun to be a part of it it, ha- it definitely doesn't have that you know collectible card game barrier that it it should from the from the appearance but uh it's been uh it's been really fun to keep playing this game i'm, I'm really surprised that yeah especially with like reaper of souls coming out and people getting more sweet on diablo 3 yeah that Hearthstone is what is exploding and people are talking about and reviews are dropping 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10 oh, yeah. kind of stuff. And I'm like, it's a card game. It's, it's a good card game, but I'm like, so wow. Why aren't you playing? Can I, I, I Do I need to win, like block Diablo 3 from your computer and you'll give it a shot? Or is it, I don't want to play a card game? I, I would hang myself if I couldn't play, play Diablo 3. Well, that would be that's not the outcome that I'm after. Um, maybe I can trick you I, into Hearthstone. I, I <laughs> well, see, I gotta, I gotta like, I gotta pick my battles with you because we have an upcoming one this fall when the World of Warcraft expansion comes out. <laughs> that battle, I and... hope that battle goes nowhere. <laughs> um, pandas be damned. Yeah. And I yeah I don't know if Hearthstone's worth 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 the fight. I'm having I'm having fun without you, um, but uh. But yeah, you don't really need. I feel like you don't really need friends in particular. No, I mean that's, the game is like I hate playing. I hate playing video games against people I don't know. Just like in general, it's not a a thing I enjoy. Hearthstone has just eliminated that that any anxiousness I have around that. Like the that if the the emote system I've works noticed. so damn well it is it's it's just fun to jump in and play against people well so, played yeah thank you <laughs> just over and over again <laughs> yeah i kind of go i kind of go overboard with the emotes when i am playing against somebody i know um i just thank them for everything 
everything they're doing <laughs> right now. Um, Thank you for being you. Yeah. Uh, but my actual my a- actual game of the week, Dark Souls Two, uh, came out for the PC last week and game of the year. It fucking it feels great. <laughs> it feels great. Um, here's it the is. thing. I love Demon Souls. I probably put in about twenty hours of Demon Souls. Did you finish that? No, not even close. I suck. I did. <laughs> you finished Demon Souls? I finished Demon. I didn't the only know one of the three. Okay. I finished. Yeah. And then when Dark Souls came out, it came out right when I was upgrading my PC. So there's a few there's a few games that were just kind of caught in that limbo, as far as um, I couldn't focus on it because I was balancing some console games and upgrading my PC and. So I ended up buying Dark Souls again later for the PC, and as it kind of okay. came back up in conversation, you know, I was going to live stream it, but Coop kind of got interested in it. And when he was running with the live streams for us on the site, like, um, it kind of distracted me. Like, I, so I, I didn't get back into Dark Souls, and by the time he kind of burned out on it and I was ready to play again, Dark Souls 2 was right around the corner. So I just, I chose yeah. to wait. I chose to wait. And, yeah, I, if if... I didn't have like responsibilities to myself and other people in the world that Dark Souls 2 <laughs> would be all I'm doing right now. I I just I love figuring that game out and to the point it's where like a puzzle. it is. I mean, to the point where like the first night I played it, I think I played for four, four or five hours and I completely wasted my time for two and a half hours. I went the wrong way. And the thing is, yeah, with these games when you walk into a new area and you're fighting enemies and you like, and they are really powerful and they are kicking your ass, but you find a way to beat them. No alarm goes off in my head. It's like, Oh no, it's just dark souls being dark souls. This is a hard ass game. I've just got to be on top of my game to beat these guys. And then it's just like, so I beat like this giant knight looking dude and then realized, Oh, there's another giant knight looking dude behind him. And there's, there's another there's one behind more. him, and then there's a room of three of them, and then there's two more, and then there's a boss, and like I was, and luckily yeah. somebody in chat is like, "Dude, you need to like go to the forest. You you shouldn't be here." And I was like, "Oh." These are the kinds of things that, as a person who's also playing this game, I saw you doing that. I would never tell you you are going in the wrong direction because it's I, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's funnier as a spectator to watch you beat up against hard <laughs> things, but that's kind of the way Dark Souls is. Is you, you would eventually figure out, you know, after a while of you know getting your ass handed to you, maybe I should try my luck elsewhere. That's just the nature of Dark Souls. Well, it was. I mean, I remember Demon Souls being pretty pretty damn linear. Like I don't but remember yeah, that, being able to go a different place. So it never even entered my they mind. They spelled it out. Yeah, they spelled it out in that game. It never entered my mind because the only other like route I had tried, I hit an I hit a wall. Like there was a door I could not open. So then I went back and I was like, oh, here's the other path. So I figured this is the way I'm supposed to go. Like the yeah. enemies aren't going to be the wall. It's going to be like I don't have an item or something. And uh, anyway, that didn't phase me at all. But because it actually like <laughs> when I found the right areas, like, oh yeah, like I mean I can fight these zombie these undead soldiers. These guys are nothing. And even though they kicked my ass for another two hours, but. Yeah, I am. Uh, and, and you, you also witnessed like I've been having trouble with the PC version. Um, you know, it looks it looks great. Uh, the mod yeah. makes it look amazing, even though I can't figure out how to live stream it with the mod activated. Um, and it has controller support, mm-hmm. like my Xbox uh, 360 controller is working fine, but it it doesn't give you any kind of key binding information related to the controller. And oh, um, and I for the longest time, um, I didn't know how to basically load up my menu with items. I could not figure out how to use multiple items. I couldn't switch between weapons. I was having to go yeah, back yeah. to the inventory. I like had these throwing knives that I wanted to use, and the only way I could, I, I couldn't use them quickly because I was having to load up all these menus, and it was so that was really frustrating. Eventually, I'm sure it was. We stumbled across it, and so it's been funny. I've I've like because I know that these games are a little bit. Um, they're tough and they're they're not like the the UI isn't designed all that in, intuitively. I just kind of accept that oh this game is just kind of broken this way and um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's Dark Souls being Dark Souls. So I'm gonna keep beating my head against the wall and I don't get frustrated. Like I I wish it would be better. But then when we discovered like just these just you know no it's not that hard. Just move like put the item in this slot and it works. And it's yeah. Like, then like 
between fighting guys that are impossible to going to like normal level enemies and then being able to use a quick inventory over like after six hours of not not being able to do that, this this game is a, a lot more fun. And that must have even been empowering. <laughs> yes, it's just like oh my god, I can do anything. I'm a fuck. I'm a fucking god. And then I roll off. Um, the edge and kill myself. Um, you fall down a pit. <laughs> because the other like big dumb ignorant moment for me was, um, I had gotten killed so many times that I was stuck at the minimum num- amount of health. I was like the undead, undead. I was hollowed. I only had half my health. Yeah. And then there are these effigies that you can use. Well, I thought you had to burn them because they're effigies. I did in the beginning too. <laughs> so these effigies that you can use to restore yourself to hu- human form and have full health. And yeah, I burned a couple of them and nothing happened, so I ignored them. And then when somebody actually told me to actually use the item instead of burning it, um, now like I have so much health, I don't even know what could possibly stop me. Of course, the, the next enemy around the corner will, but it's still fun. <laughs> so, uh, that was a blast. I will, I will play that at least once a week for the foreseeable future, because who knows what, what the end of that game will be for me. So. I'm just glad a few of us are playing Dark Souls games. Yeah. I even think... if neither of us might finish it, but <laughs> the fact that we're playing it, no, I it's... love those games. I do too. I, I'm glad to be able to focus on one for the first time in, well, a really long time. So. Um, They're fantastic. Game pitches are back, my friend, and you came prepared. Game pitches... Well, yeah, and it kind of makes sense just the, with the fact that I'm playing Diablo 3, you're playing Dark Souls 2... And I'm like, what kind of zany idea can I come up with for a game pitch? Like, these are tough, you know, the generator notwithstanding. Yeah. But I was like, there are a lot of Souls games, Reaper of Souls, Dark Souls. And I was like, oh, okay. what if they made one of those kind of just like football manager-esque games <laughs> where instead of managing a team of, you know, sports athletes, you know, you're managing all these kind of adventurers that are – you know, having to get souls, and so you're you're managing the people. Yeah, keep the market like, of souls going. Oh, okay. Oh, so the soul stock market. Like, how do you? Yeah. You, like, how do you decide to, to divvy up souls in between games? Because obviously there are a lot of you're. There's a lot of souls involved in Diablo three, and obviously a lot in, involved in Dark Souls. But like, I wonder who gets yeah. which game gets more souls because. No, in both of those games, just like focusing on those two games alone, both of those games seem to be based in kind of like a real world s scenario where like you're on you're on Earth and there's people and people are dying and they're creating the souls, and so like that would be the factor of it, like the randomness of you know the rate of people dying in the real world to give these souls to these game characters, and sometimes you know a lot of souls are coming in, or sometimes there's a shortage, and there's other managers, you know, they're hoping to get souls too. I can't imagine the uh, the backroom deals that have to be done to make sure the 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 souls keep flowing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I think I'll, at some I will poison a country to get more souls. At some point, somebody's going to broker another deal with Kane, and we're going to get another Soul Reaver game just to get more oh, more in, more currency in into the system. Um, yeah, I would I, like to get Kane in there. I think that was they had like the well of well they had like they had the well of souls in that game, and I think. Even though Amalur's dead, I think Reckoning kind of revolved around souls as well. Um, there are other there are other universes where their soul market has completely crashed. <laughs> there are no more souls in those games whatsoever. Like, and like those managers, they're just out of luck. They're trying to they're trying to make their way into the new soul market. If you follow were the trends, playing the soul market, which game are you betting on right now? Are we? Is Dark Souls two? Is that is that? as good as it's going to get, is it time to sell? Um, I don't know how to play stock market. Stock market so. I think I think Dark Souls 2 might still be going. I think you, you don't want to sell up yet. Okay. It's still kind of new. Um, like another wave? They did say that they're considering another expansion for Diablo 3, and I know there are plans for ongoing content, like seasonal content for Diablo 3, so that might be, that might not so, be dead either. Yeah, they're, they're both going pretty strong the souls are flowing and so i don't know if i would sell out just yet but you, you got you gotta get more souls into them yeah i wonder if they like if the soul simulators if they were responsible for the like if they hadn't kept the market alive to the point that we got a, a, a demon souls and there's still there's still no way even when demon souls was created that they thought it would be 
as big as it was, but no way. Um, you know that that's a pretty hot market right now. So, um, yeah, like there's so many people that die in that game, and there's a lot of souls in yeah Dark Souls. <laughs> just what do what does soul soul bankers look like? I just there's <laughs> some shady shady ass characters on Hell's Shadow Wall Street. Figures. Yeah, counting souls and dimly lit back rooms. All right, we're going to go to Orteal's game generator for the next one. Um, all right, so we're, what we're going to do going forward is we're going to do one of these a week, and we're just going to take what it gives us. So <clears throat> what do you think this game is? Let's walk through a simulation game where you create birds until you own everything. A simulation game where you create birds? <laughs> yes, until you own everything. Until you own everything, and bir- we all know birds don't have souls. No, <laughs> this is unrelated to the so- <laughs> to your soul simulation. So these are two different simulations. Mm-hmm. I wow, it's like Alfred Hitchcock comes. Yeah. Through, I so I started thinking. First thing that popped <laughs> in my head was Hitchcock's birds, um, but also like creating the ultimate bird, like Bioshock Infinite. Oh man. Like, at some yeah, point, you basically army. are assembling a bird army. A whole army of songbirds. A, a big enough bird army where technology bows to your will, because you have to own everything. It is almost like Bioshock, and I mean, I guess the first Bioshock's plenty old enough, I mean, that one had, like, subliminal messages and mind <laughs> control influence, so imagine if you had birds that were able to... Mind control the people and, you know, crush all those who are, you know, strong in their brain power to you know, withstand the the corruption. Jordan's going just... a different route in chat, uh, just selling birds for money so that you have all the money in the world to buy everything until you own everything. He's right. I mean, if you own everything, you, currency has to come into play. I was thinking so more of bird breeder. just creating power through birds. Um, I like bird I, power. Yeah, I mean that could it could fuel that could actually like fuel electricity as well. Oh man. It's like if there's bird power and there's horse power, we all know that a horse that is like a bird is the <laughs> Pegasus. Yes, so I think that counts. You can yeah. Pegasus power. What other loosely loosely related birds are there? Like a um I was also thinking that um Geese are assholes, I know yeah, that. They are. I mean but, but you gotta you you if you can control geese, like and and strategically use their ability to shit on important things to devalue them, <laughs> like you could like ruin technology and devalue. Maybe that's the thing. You're not really like increasing your value. You're devaluing everything you, else you in the world. Everything else because they're just shitting on everything. So all the geese go yeah. to Facebook and they shit all over the Oculus Rift. They destroy that. So I think this has to be basically a Dynasty Warriors type of environment as well, to, to just. Uh, control all these armies <laughs> of birds. Um, 400 but, geese yeah. closely swarming over the countries. It's like pandemic. <laughs> Gosh, Dynasty pandemic. So many. So many or, or just the other uh, more morbid route is that you uh, actually pass the avian flu <laughs> and just wipe out humanity till you th- till you're the only one so you technically own everything. And you're immune because you like have you have these birds. I so. was about to throw out. I'm like, if you have the, you have I to be it's... immune to the flu if you're going to do that. Because it's actually <laughs> more. Of a... yeah, you kill everyone. One million doves attack Chicago. The headlines. <laughs> they write themselves. Watch uh, birds. No, I think yeah, I think this has to be a plague. It's a plague game. It's uh, and uh, and Hitchcock. Birds are filthy. Hitchcock would be proud. So interesting. I coming, hate birds. coming to uh, uh, iOS free-to-play device near you i love pegasus though yeah they just you're on to something <laughs> with the pegasus but let's move on to, to actual actual news about actual games um real games real video games in the real video game industry um Not so the they released one. some s- interesting stats about twitch viewer- viewership uh basically sure um they're reporting on the uh, like basically the traffic for streaming sites in the United States um, and Twitch 
owns over 40% of all <laughs> of streaming traffic, um, which is – so it's, it's it's beating out Major League Baseball, ESPN – uh, CNN, like obviously the the news the news sections because number two the only yeah I think the number two option is WWE and that I'll be curious to see if that can even hold its own because that was the debut of the WWE network and it was WrestleMania month so uh, wow uh, so yeah I think those numbers are they will lose some of their pie going forward but the the internet is watching video games that's what we learned from this from these numbers. Twitch and Twitch is like what sixty seven percent League of Legends and Dota. <laughs> right, right. The internet, the internet is MOBA. <laughs> the internet's just MOBA. Yeah, that's all it is. If, if WWE wants to get more of this pie, they need to start mobbing up, get some battle arenas going. But I mean, they Twitch has said before that they want to be the the ESPN of video games, and it's just you know the. The other like sports and other live television has not made the. There are seven times switch to live streaming is yeah. It's just, I granted like there's a certain certain audience and like this is the only way you can really consume video game content. It's not like you have a broadcast option to, uh, you know, watch Dota or or League. But um, yeah, but I I just as they formulate more and more numbers like this and more and more months of dominance, I I think mainstream. Uh, media options have to kind of pay attention, and this is kind of a, I don't know, it was the first numbers I've seen like this, and it was kind of a loud statement, and, you know, Twitch is really just getting going as far as they've opened the door uh, with with their console crowd, and I think people are... Um, yeah, that's pretty fresh. Uh, ...starting to, to watch through those, those devices, so it's only going to uh, uh, grow from there, but um, they are they are growing. <laughs> that That is... Uh, I don't know. It's kind of. It's just. It's just crazy to see it compared to ESPN. And I was like, "Why do you want to be ESPN? You're already like triple their online viewership." So, um, ESPN should be trying to be Twitch. There you go. Boom. Uh, Let's let people chat while they watch sports center. <laughs> <laughs> um. Next up, I thought. I don't know. I thought this was cute. Um, we make fun of pre-order options quite a bit and um mario kart 8 not it's a game i'm getting i don't really pre-order these these games um but they're they're offering a promotion where or best buys running a promotion where if you pre-order uh mario kart 8 they're going to give you a ten dollar uh prepaid mastercard to use on gas so that you're getting actual gas to pre-order mario karts great petroleum it's like almost so practical it makes no sense I'm glad they care about, you know, putting fuel in my car, because that's the thing that I have to do. <laughs> like, I have to fuel my car, or else I don't go anywhere. We, I mean, we've seen some ridiculous, like, pre-order campaigns, like, and in, or in, in, in just advertising campaigns in general, but, like, this is, like I said, the most practical one I've seen, and I'm okay, I'm okay with this. Like, if you're, you're giving me ten bucks, I, I don't know, I thought it was clever. I hope that like the next Sims release comes with like a cart that helps pay for your electricity or something. <laughs> go buy groceries. Uh, go build a ladder for your pool. Cause you Can forget, I use the ten dollar card at a gas station, but to buy lottery tickets? What game would work for, with lottery tickets? Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like the fact that it was, it made sense for the game was. It, 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 it was actually useful, and it made sense with the game. It. It was it. It cracked me up. So, it is pretty funny. It sucks. I mean, like in Europe, they get like these big Wii U bundles with Mario hats and like steering wheels, and there's like a blue shell keychain. I'm like, I want that stuff, and they're like, No, have ten dollars. Put gas in your car. <laughs> You're working, man. We've already. Oh, you you don't own a Wii U yet, though, do you? I got a Wii U. Oh yeah, never. You're, a, you're my big your tro- trouble free, freeze. Sorry. Yeah. Sometimes when I load up my Wii U, I just assume I'm the only one that that has one. So um, it's lonely. It feels that it's way. It's lonely there, but um, um, the big story of the weekend, which we've talked about this a couple times on the show, um, the ET excavation. Um, Phone home. I don't know. I guess I missed when they actually got the green light because that actually just happened this weekend. I went. It, it went from. It just happened. 
we talked to we talked to Gifford, our our environmental lawyer on the site, and he was pretty convinced that that wasn't going to be possible, that it wasn't going to be passed. But uh, somewhere in between uh, me seeing Microsoft signing on to fund the documentary behind this, which is Rise and Fall of Atari, uh, ending with the burial of all these ET cartridges, which was kind of becoming coming an urban legend. Uh, they finally. Uh, got the right permits to go dig in this New Mexico landfill, and they found all of the Atari cartridges. And I don't know. I there was a, it was I, glorious. I didn't realize I fo- followed so many Atari fans until until this weekend. When there's a pile of them out in the desert, people are excited. Did you think it was really out there? I always assumed it was a real thing. I mean, where else did they all go? <sighs> <laughs> Where no, they... no one has them. No one wants these things. Yeah, I was. It's actually kind of sad to see some of the other, like you know, like Centipede was also like the other games that were in the pile. Like I honestly assumed it's like, oh, it's just this is just a big pile of failed ET stuff. But it's like a big pile of all the failed Atari stuff. Like we've made way too many games, and people have stopped buying games. It's not just that ET is terrible, and no one wants to play it. I'm surprised Drew Barrymore wasn't invited to. Go. Like stand next to the pile of ET. No, Adam Sandler's doing the the other video game movie. <laughs> oh, okay. So she, she's she's busy. Oh, now. never mind. Your no, your reference is better. Sorry, I always forget, yeah. I always forget that she was actually in ET. Yeah, she's in ET. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. I wanted one of them to actually just uncover ET himself, like he <laughs> his bones. Yeah, Duh. holding a few copies in his arms, he died. I don't know. It was, uh, like I said, the, I didn't think it would be that big of a deal either. Like, I, a lot of people got, um, you know, it was a feel-good nostalgic story for them. And it's kind of r- rare that I notice a big video game story on the weekend. And this thing was just, it was everywhere just because it, you know, a lot of my friends were even posting about it. My, like, kind of my, my friends that don't normally post about video games are talking about it, so. It caught me off guard. I had no idea it was happening and yeah, everyone all of a sudden is like, "Hooray! Garbage was found." Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> they didn't have to go dig that far. I'm pretty sure I have about four copies of ET. I have stumbled across a couple Ataris um, in addition to the one that I grew up with. So I don't have my other consoles for some reason. I kept hanging on to my, I hung on to my Atari though. Um, kind of fun to say Atari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Um, Atari. So, Dark Souls is a success. We can't argue against that. And it was just a matter of time before some games wanted to get on on that Dark Souls action. They have souls of themselves to send to the Soul Simulator. Um, souls. The and so I came across the trailer for Lords of the Fallen, and I don't really know the developer behind it, and I know I know. I was I know that Capcom, they're working on their own kind of Dark Souls game. But this is a third Dark Souls looking game of just hardcore dungeon crawler. And I'll be curious to see how these games do. One, are we fatigued by Dark Souls? And two, is Dark Souls, like, for that genre, is it the best design for it? Can someone else pull it off? Like, do we want more in... or? In, and are we playing a good or a bad version of it? It's kind of the questions I want answered by these new kind of Dark Souls games. But I watched the trailer in the game. I mean, at least the footage they show that looks pretty good. I like the trailer because it it basically centers around one boss fight and yeah. the same hero running up to fight him, but he's like in different gear every time and keeps failing. And he's like obviously got different skills. Like sometimes he's using magic, sometimes he's using giant weapons and. Sometimes he's trying to dodge out of the way, and sometimes he's just trying to beat the shit out of him, but he keeps failing. It did a really, it was just really effective of with at telling you what this game is actually going to be all about. So, do you want? So it's. Do you want more Dark Souls that isn't Dark Souls? I need to finish a game that actually has the title of Dark Souls <laughs> okay. before I know if I want more Dark Souls. But well, you've based got on how this looks. I I'm I don't know I'm kind of I hate to, I guess get myself excited for something. If I already have a thing that fulfills yeah, that yeah. excitement, yeah, and then I I also don't know anything about. I just looked up the developers like CI Games. They're a Polish studio. I've never heard of them. Mm-hmm. 
and so I have no comparison on you know anything else they've done at this point in time. But from what they saw, it it looks like something I will keep an eye on. Yeah. So it's out this when it releases out this winter. Uh, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Um, yeah, I just we'll see how we feel at the end of Dark Souls too. <laughs> like after we've I'll gone through. I just have to see. Um, I mean. There is, I guess, there is a part of Dark Souls. I mean, it's all everyone knows about the difficulty and you know, having to like develop a technique and just be very observant of your surroundings. But I mean, if they do kind of uh, the multiplayer aspect a little different, yeah, maybe that could I think that's where it could apart. improve. Because I mean, the thing that we we keep talking about, um, like every conversation I have about Dark Souls with somebody that's playing Dark Souls, is we want to play together. We want it to be easier to do the co-op stuff. Um, and I think if they could, if somebody could figure that out, uh, I think that would be the next route to go. But like, you know, I kind of, it sounds like the, you know, Dark Souls 2 has been really well received, but I kind of doubt it. Like, how many times can you make this game before, you know, before the fatigue sets in or, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what the limits of these, these hardcore games are going to be because eventually we're, we're not going to want to get our asses kicked by every game that we play. Yeah, sometimes I just want to win. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, lastly, uh, last week, um, some more some more good Nintendo news um, uh, or nostalgic news, I guess. Uh, was the Game Boy's twenty uh, fifth anniversary? Did you have a regular Game Boy? I had that brick Game Boy with the green screen. Yeah. And it was, it's probably somewhere around my parents' house right now, but I played that thing, it like went everywhere with me, which is just so bizarre to even think about today, that I was porting that yeah, you huge don't carry Game phone Boy with... everywhere. <laughs> the thing was huge. It's huge. I have one right it here. Was, it was big. I dropped one in the toilet once. I think I had it replaced. It was, I had a big case for it it held like eight games which seemed like a lot at the time to have eight games in a case it's a big it is oh, it's, it's so heavy and it's full of batteries it's just full of the batteries like i i came across like i really liked a lot of the there's a lot of uh game boy artwork going around last week like revisiting old old ads but it was the ads for all the accessories like the fucking light boy the like just the sh- the shit that you would strap to this to make it comfortable <laughs> and like viewable and I had a magnifying glass for it. Yeah, yeah. It uh that's that's the the really silly part of its history that stands out to me cuz it took me a while my sister had the Game Boy because when she had yeah. when she got the Game Boy I was able to I had basically dominated the regular Nintendo and this distracted her so she couldn't I had more Nintendo time. So I didn't want a Game Boy cuz that was for my sister. Uh, but I got one later. And um, especially like when the uh, the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Pocket and that stuff started coming out, and uh, um, but I don't know. There's there's just something really iconic about the original design that um, I ended up when we were um, promoting and and watching the the Tetris documentary. Like kind of that's that got got the itch back to I go track down a Game Boy. So um, yeah, so happy birthday, happy birthday, Game Boy. I had a ton of Game Boys though. I didn't have the Game Boy Micro though. That that was no, tiny. No, that's, that's the one I don't. Have. I mean, still my favorite Game Boy design is the DSP. I love I love that little thing. Except SP is pretty good. So I busted out the SP a couple of years ago and discovered one of their uh, <clears throat> one of the design decisions they made to get it so small was they combined they combined the um, the headphone jack. I think with the power cable and like to be able to get headphones, you got to get a splitter. You had to have an adapter oh. to be able to plug headphones into it. There was no actual headphone jack, so it was that was the only flaw in that design. But most of the time, I played it without headphones anyway. But yeah, I do most of, if I do some ser- if I do serious handheld gaming now, I want headphones. So um, me too. So anyway, I don't know how we got there. Let's do. I'll report back when it's the SP's anniversary too. Um, <laughs> but let's get out of here with game industry shout outs. Uh, what you got? My shout out is a call out and it's the fact that there are season passes like 
people have had issues with season passes for a while, so this is nothing new. But it's the fact that good, good old Nintendo, who I was just bashing <laughs> just earlier mm-hmm. about their digital practices, will release their first season pass with Mario Golf, which releases on uh, Friday. Yeah. And um, I think the price of that one actually isn't all that bad. You get more courses, more characters. But it's like, oh, Nintendo, you're doing it now too. But so, it, the straw that broke the back for me was the fact that I saw a, an article about Watch Dogs having season, its own season pass, $20, more Watch Dogs stuff. And it's like, oh, you, you'll get more stories and you'll get some cool stuff to do in Watch Dogs. And I don't know. It's just, I'm like, why why do they even announce this stuff before the game is out? Like, if I was already hyped for Watch Dogs, I don't want a season pass. I don't want them... I don't want to know that they're thinking about squeezing more money out of me, and that's what my main issue. I think is with season passes. But the thing is, it's also it's also Nintendo and Ubisoft. Like they're pretty slow to change course. But they it's are kind of funny. <laughs> way too slow. Um, but yeah, just I don't know. It's I'm not surprised to see you. you you'd think Ubisoft wouldn't uh, be into season passes anymore, but it, it it's also bizarre to see that alongside Nintendo getting into it. It's just like yeah. I mean, they're doing their free to play experiment yeah. with the. Uh, well, it's like a, the baseball game, the Rusty's Baseball. Oh, yeah, whatever something. that's called. Yeah. But Rusty's is in the title. Um, But that kind of actually, um, we'll keep with Nintendo here. For my, for my shout-out side of it is this week in 3DS. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why they can't space those these out, but holy shit, I, we got Mario Golf, which sounds excellent. Um, There's a demo out. There's a fucking new Picross game which is just a sorry Hearthstone like this is what I'm going to be go- going to do for a while um, and then the, the new Kirby game is also also new out this Kirby. week that's three pretty big Nintendo releases in one week yeah which is in one week very strange um, uh, but apparently uh, my call out section of this is apparently they've kind of uh, blown their load because they're not going to uh, Nintendo's not going to do an E3 press conference again this year uh, they announced today they're gonna do hmm. like a Smash Brothers tourney and you know so a, a digital like showcase that you can that they'll probably live stream or you can download and see promotions for the other stuff and then they'll have their like their on site treehouse thing to talk about games but like nothing nothing formal which I don't know like I get they I don't know I don't know what they would show at a press conference at this point but it's just like I don't know either. It's just really sad <laughs> to see them like kind of just it is. admitting defeat. It's like, hey, yeah, it's just us because none, none of the third parties are supporting us anymore, and um, obviously, whatever we're working on next isn't ready to show. So um, we hope you play the game, play the games, play the games. Yeah. Nintendo was always the different one. I felt yeah. when they presented at E3, so like Microsoft don't... and Sony. Oh, man. Always headbutting, but Nintendo was there, just happy times. Like, I mean, you know, here's some Pikmin, guys. I mean, am I at? The, are we at the point now where, like, so Jack's not going to do the Sony press conference? We don't Papa get. Tea. We don't get any Reggie. Uh, I mean, my I. Microsoft doesn't have any stage presence anymore. Um nope. The closest thing I like get hyped about as far as presenters go is. And I'm at I'm at Peter Moore at EA. Like, <laughs> I'd rather see you like at any of the other three, but it's it's E3 is going to be okay. E3 was awesome last year. We're not going to be able to top that anyway. So maybe maybe we all do need to take a take a little break here. But I I there yeah. it's there's going to be some new faces need to step up. We need some new personalities in front of these in front of these companies to entertain me and make some drama happen uh, during these press conferences. So. It won't be Nintendo, though. Ubisoft's uh, presentation is going to be off the hook. Yeah. Bomb- bombastic. It's at least awkward face, and entertaining. Face in your hands, tears rolling down your cheeks, make it stop. Yeah. Three jokes per second. <laughs> Maybe they'll get these. Maybe it- it- There's no Far Cry 3 this year, though, so they can't show more video like, game breasts. I thought there were like rumors about Far Cry 4 were going around. Maybe There, there might be. I know this one will be all about. It'll be the big Unity Assassin's Creed Unity unveiling. I'm sure it'll be uh, all. It'll be all Assassin's Creed. Ass Creed for life. Yeah, all Assassin's Creed and uh, what the 
what's the other what's the Tom Clancy game? Um, some Splinter Cell in there. No. Ghost Recon's. No, the the Division. Division. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that's going to do it for tonight's show. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Aaron, thanks for swinging by digitally. <laughs> digitally. digitally. Uh, Top Video Game Podcast will be back again next week. Um, if you like the show, uh, give us some support on YouTube or iTunes, and uh, we'll see you next time. If you like Souls, upvote. <laughs>